What's the warning for those of you that want your CDLs? Hmm. Check it out. It's your boy TC with Grim Reaper Transport. Check it out. I know it's been a minute. Don't cut my head off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm dealing with some stuff back at home and um, it's just taking a toll on me. So hang in there with me. Otherwise, back to the topic. What's the warning about those of you that want to get y'all CDLs? The warning is your time is running out. That's just plain and simple. Your time is running out. Starting February 7th, I believe. Everybody's talking about it across YouTube. I guess I'll put it out there too. Uh, February 7th, the new law for CDL mandates go in effect. So, what does this mean? <sighs> you can no longer just jump in a truck or get in your pickup truck with a trailer and go to the DMV and take your skills test without proof that you had certified training from a certified school that's certified through DOT. Not the state, the federal. Ready for connection. So, as of right now, the only loophole anybody has been able to find, and I think they intentionally left it there because they knew how much this was going to cause a increase or influx in testing, is that those of you that want to get your CDLs, dead serious, if you want to get your CDLs and you do not want to go to a school stud start studying right now if you ain't got a book look up your state in your app store and pull up the flashcards or the study guide study that go down set call the DMV tell them you want to take a uh, you want to take your uh, permit test for your uh, for your learners and go down there and take the test on the computer, get your learners. Once you have your learners, as long as your learners does not expire before February 7th, you can still take the test, the skills test, the driver's test, the driver test. You can still take the test as it sits right now. Meaning, uh, a licensed CDL person takes your vehicle out to the to the test site. You get out there. You get in the vehicle with the. You go over everything with the uh, with the uh, examiner. Uh, examiner gets in the vehicle with you. You go around and do your. Uh, you go around and do your skills test, your backing, your turning, your brake control, your acceleration, use of turn signals, calling out signs, noticing signs, what they say, uh, uh, being aware of potential road hazards. What else? I'm trying to go over, I'm trying to spit out a couple of jewels for you guys that I can remember uh, because this is what they're going to do on the test. Uh, if you have a manual transmission they they will be looking at how you shift your gears. Please don't stall out. 
because once you stall out, that ends the test. But you got, I think you have uh, five days, I think it is, if I remember right, to go back and retake your skills test again. Um, they will be going through a pre-trip with you. So those of you that's uh, tested out in pickup trucks, please know your engine, all the major engine parts of your vehicle, know where your fuel filter is, know where your uh, oil filter is, know where your uh, power steering pump is, your brake fluid, View your water pump, tell them where your water pump is, your alternator, your fan, your fan belt, your radiator, your batteries, your fuse box, all your fuse boxes, under the hood and in the vehicle. Um, your AC compressor pump and your fuel water separator. Typically, that's up under the truck. Um, but if they ask about it, you know where it's at. You will have to check your oil during your pre-trip. You have to check it, so make sure you got some type of uh, paper towel or, you know, some spare rag tied up under the hood somewhere where it won't get caught up so you can wipe it off. Um, all of this. The reason why I'm saying this and I'm emphasizing on the pickup trucks, there are a lot of RV transporters out there that want to get their CDL and they don't want to kill their time going to a school to get their training if all they're doing is pulling RVs and they just need their CDL for RV transport. And typically everybody, all right, I know you're asking me, okay, I thought we didn't need CDL for RV transport. You don't. You literally don't. But if you ask anybody in RV transport and some of these, uh, I'm sorry, uh, some of these uh, transport companies, the uh, the travel trailers or the fifth wheels or should I say the fifth wheels that are that meet the criteria to have a CDL pay a little bit more than the regular fifth wheels so a lot of people want to get that big money too while driving in, in uh, the RV transport so they obtain their CDLs So what I was told about uh, obtaining a CDL, you need a truck, a pickup truck, and a trailer. Depending on what state you're in, you'll have to call your state to ask them, does the trailer size matter to take the CDL portion of the test, skills test? If it doesn't, go rent your trailer, hook it up, practices, practice your backing, uh, practice your lane sh your lane changing uh, and if you want to know what kind of backing you need to practice go online with your state look up the uh, the uh, the backing test of the CDL uh, or look up the uh, CDL manual and it'll show you all the types of backing you, you should know how to do uh, honestly I wouldn't go out and get a little short trailer because it it has a different pivot point. In a half mile, turn left. It has a different pivot point than a forty foot trailer or a uh, fifty three foot trailer or a thirty six foot trailer. It's it's a shorter pivot point. My advice would be is if you can find a thirty five or higher trailer. Turn left rent that trailer or if you know somebody that has that trailer ask to borrow it use it test uh practice with it um 
And then if it's possible, test with it. Whatever trailer it is that you're practicing with, test with that trailer. Because if you grab something different, it's going to be a little bit off. You're used to the trailer that you're testing on. This is my advice or my suggestion. I ain't going to say advice. It's my suggestion to use the same trailer, meaning the same length, same width. All right? Um, okay. I, I already see the question coming in. Well, hey, TC, did you, did you, did you test out like that? No, unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, I, I did go to a CDL school because I uh, wanted to drive uh, semi trucks. So I went to a CDL school to get all the the need to know. But what I did do on my own, I went ahead and got my permit. So when I showed up at the CDL school, they was going over all of this and I was like, uh, the instructor was like, yeah, you need all of this to, to get your permit. You need no artists to get your permit. I told the instructor, I already had my permit. Oh, really? Showed it to him. He made a copy of it, put it in my file. He said, hey, the rest of the week, you ain't got to come to class because you already everything we covering is over the permit. Okay. I skipped a week of class. Now, the other thing about this new mandate is that um, they have not set a minimum time or a minimum hours that you have to be trained for your CDL. So if the school set it to be three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, that's the school's that's the school's recommendation. That's what they're gonna do. So you have to base it off of that. So but what I'm what I will tell you, you you might sit and say, well, I'll wait for the school. That's 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 all your right. I prefer people to go to school because you'll learn some things that you didn't know. But those of you that saying, nah, I got it. I've been doing this for a while. I just need to get it to do transport. All right, no problem. You ain't gotta go. But you have to do your permit test, your uh, your learner's permit test, and pass it before February seventh. And like I was saying before, you'll you'll be grandfathered in, so you don't have to go to class. You don't have to go to a school to test out on the skills test. You can still test out the original way. But I encourage you to go to school, but the downside about going to the school, if you check schools now, check CDL schools right now, they are starting to book up. Check the DMV. They are booked up trying to get people in for CDL tests, the skills test. They are, you think I'm joking? You think I'm joking? Call your... Call your CDL, uh, your DMV, and ask when can you schedule a CDL skills test? How far is it booked out? Ask them. I know in Georgia, it's already booking up. One of my friends, Robert, I introduced you guys to. He says uh, they tried to book. They tried to book one for. Uh, in November, they told them it was two months out. So it was in January that they were supposed to do their skills test. Uh, so it's booked. It's booked out. This is no joke. This is no lie. It is booked out. It is packed up. The DMV is packed up. They knew this was going to happen. This, the, I believe this is the reason why they put that uh, that uh, loophole 
of getting your permit so you can go everybody can test out on the computer that's that's the simple part that's the easy part that's the less time consuming part it's testing out on the computer so it's up to you the way you want to do it how you want to do it in a quarter mile i'm not giving any right. legal advice but your choice is your choice so hopefully this encourages some of you guys to go out there and do what you need to do And remember, turn right. February 7th, 2022. It's coming around real quick. Oh, before I forget, the downside about testing out in a truck. If your truck doesn't have air brakes and it's automatic, you will be, you will have restrictions on your CDL that you can only drive a automatic with no air brakes. Downside. I came up with an idea about that. And um, you would literally have to call <clears throat> excuse me, your DMV and ask if that's if this idea is possible to do with your DMV. If you're not worried about the manual, you're cool with you cool with doing automatic, but you want to get your air brake endorsement on there ask the DMV can you test out in your pickup truck for the skills test of pulling a trailer and do your air brake with a box in truck feet, box truck that has air brakes because you still you still using air brakes, you see what I'm saying? So if you learn if you learn the air brakes, and you know the concept of what the air brakes do, how much psi, uh, this that and the third, actually can you test out that one? To see, turn left. A few of us do know people running around here in semis. And literally with an air with air brakes, you gotta know how to pump them. You gotta know how to fill them up and pump them down. What's the air pressure for them to be right when it's when when you're driving? And what it is uh, when it's bad when when you're driving as well. What will cause your brakes to pop out? for your trailer, your truck. Just an idea. So, hopefully, any of you guys out there, do me a favor. If your DMV does allow that, put it in the comments below so other subscribers and other viewers can see it. And if they, if you put your state, and if they allow you to test out that way that I just described. If they allow you to test out that way, put your state and put uh, yes can test out with pickup truck and trailer. In a half mile, and use up the roundabout. Take the first exit and use uh, box truck with air brakes for air brake tests or a semi with air brakes for the air brake test because you might it might be somebody right now on the property with a semi and you can use theirs so 
let me know put it in the comment section uh so everybody else will know if they won't do it they won't do it if they do they do if they say if they say no and give you a reason put in the comment section what they say uh, just be advised that was just an idea of mine i didn't say it worked but I, maybe they didn't think about that either so it never hurts to ask well let me cut this short running on 19 minutes <laughs> it's your boy tc and y'all know the saying the roads may be grim but what we gonna do what we gonna do y'all <laughs> we gonna reap that money all day all day you feel me hey y'all be safe out on the road peace